What's up and welcome to another episode of Football Everyday coming to you live and direct from Studio B here at the Wanatama Shopping Centre. I'm Nelson as usual and uh, we have the Shebs and Debs team back with us today. Good to have you here again. Chebby Singh and the lovely Deborah Henry. Um, great to have the both of you back and I'm sure you'll agree with me that it was a superb weekend of football, right guys? It was. In general. Exciting. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, you've got to start with Chel- um, United's defeat to Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Um, Shebs, Sorry, Debs. <laughs> Credit to Chelsea, first of all. Um, but me being a United fan aside, you know, I honestly felt that Fergie's team didn't deserve to lose based on that performance. So, would you agree in general? Well, I think a lot of people expected Man United to not win. And as expected, they didn't win. Um, they aren't in great form. And um, although Chelsea did not have a, a lot of the ball possession, they did score that all-important goal. And now when you look at it, they're five points, uh, have a five-point lead over Man United. Yeah. Um, but Chefs, what do you think? Do you think the free kick should have been given? Um, no, in no way it was a free kick. I, I think, you know, um, it was a bad decision by the referee. Totally uh, agree, but, man. Yeah, but, but, I mean, this is the story of refereeing again. But on the whole, I agree with Debs. I thought, you know, Man United were the better team. I thought they played the best. Uh, unfortunately, with Rooney alone up front, you know, right. it was just not enough. Yeah. Uh, but it was, it was um, a game of smothering Chelsea rather than, you know, uh, going out there to try to beat them outright, but on the counter attack, Man United looked dangerous. If only Fletcher and Carrick, you know, had kept their shots low, they could have worked uh, Perichek. Right. So all in all, uh, Man United dominated, but they lacked the cutting edge. Right. That's what I was going to um, come to, Sheps. I mean, United clearly look as if they're still kind of missing something up front in terms of that spark, right? I mean, maybe maybe Rooney aside. I, I think that's the problem, Nels, because you know you don't get a settled uh, team, or you know you don't get a settled pairing. If Berbatov is injured, you know, uh, Rooney's alone, uh, play Michael Owen from the start, Make, yeah, you know, still exactly. play two up front because Rooney, yeah. we all know, can, can drop into midfield, he can go to the left-hand side as well. Right. So, you know, getting Rooney to adjust uh, on his own was, I think it took about an hour before Rooney really started coming into the game. Yeah. So, yeah. this is the problem, you know, if you keep switching your front partnerships, you're never going to get that cohesion. Right, I mean, okay, that last one on United then, you, you think it's... Chelsea's title to lose now with a five-point lead over United, as mentioned. I mean, it's only what November, but what Chelsea gonna yeah, lose? Yeah, so I mean, do you think it's Chelsea it's, gonna yeah. win the title? Are they, are they gonna win the title? Oh, no, I th- <laughs> no, I think they still. I think they still have some competition coming from Arsenal and Man United. So right, I really hope you're right. Yeah. Um, and speaking of Arsenal, um, let's move on to Arsenal. I mean, Sheps, all the talk has generally been about Arsenal, Chelsea, and United of late. Sorry, United, Chelsea, and Liverpool. But in the meantime, Arsenal have continued their impressive run of form and steadily been climbing the table. They have been right. and uh, it's no surprise because uh, this is the first time after so many seasons Asan Wenger has actually come on and said we will win something. Right. I mean they're in great form. Yes, they don't defend well from set pieces. If yeah. you play the direct long ball against them, you can trouble them. Right. Uh, but going forward, you know, and then when you look at the bench and you think, wow, if this is not a great team, it is a great squad. When you've exactly. got Samir Nasri, Thomas Rosicki, Walcott's Eduardo well coming the off the bench, Walcott still to come back in. I mean, it is frightening. I yeah. agree with Debs. I mean, you know, it's Man United, Chelsea or Arsenal, you know, to be taken seriously in this title race. Great stuff, man. And I noticed you didn't mention Liverpool there because yeah, we all agree that Liverpool are a troubled side at the moment. We'll be right back with more talk on troubled Liverpool as it's time for our first break here in Football Every Day. But do stay tuned as we'll be right back with more chat and banter. And you're back with us here on Football Every Day for the second segment of the show. Um, as promised, we are going to chat about the troubled Liverpool mm-hmm. team at the moment. Um, got to start with you, Debs. I mean, one minute the Reds will beat teams like United, you know, even Chelsea last season. And when they're expected to build on such results, you know, they then contrive to lose to sides like Fulham. Yeah. And recently, they just drew against Birmingham. So surely this is not how you become title winners, right? No, it's not. Well, they did play well this game, although it ended in a 2-2 draw. Um, does this mean that Liverpool is out of the title race? Probably, yes. I, I certainly yes. think so. I think most quarters would agree. Yeah, yeah, although Benitez doesn't seem to think so, even though they're 11 points down. So, I don't know, maybe he's living up in the clouds somewhere. <laughs> I mean, Chips, I mean, I, I think clearly there is something wrong with the Liverpool team at the moment, right? So I mean, whether it's the Liverpool team or Benitez. Yeah. 
I think what is uh, clouded about uh, Rafa Benitez is his, um, you know, his his uh, way of thinking. I think he's the only one who doesn't believe it. You know, it's plain to to see. They yes, you know, Debs already mentioned it. They had a lot of possession, yeah. but they lack a cutting edge, and you don't get that unless you say, no, we're going to play with two strikers now, or we're going to play a third striker, and that's put the pressure on a, on a Birmingham. Right. So it was a poor performance. I think you know something's got to give. I mean, you look at them now. You know they are out of the title race. Whichever way you look at it, right. are they not? You think they're not going to lose any more matches in the in the remaining twenty-seven? Never going to happen. Something's got to give, yeah. and it will not surprise me. You know, if you look at the team. The team is going backwards. The owners, the supporters, everybody will wake up to the fact that hang on a minute. You know, last year we peaked. Right, this year we are going backwards. We've got to stop it and. I mean, I will not be surprised. It will not come as a shock to me if Rafa Benitez, you know, uh, doesn't see out Christmas at Liverpool. Right, right. Bold call there by Sheps, mm -hmm. but I got to ask you quickly, Sheps. I mean, it was clear dive by and go, right? So, as you were saying, would you say they're a bit desperate at the moment? I mean, they had to resort <laughs> to some some sort of gamesmanship uh, to salvage a point. In, in, it wasn't even a victory. Indeed, man. I mean, there's right? there's the two things here, right? If I was a Liverpool fan or if I was a Liverpool player, you know, I'll I'll buy and go a, a very very big meal. Uh, because <laughs> yeah. you know he, I mean, look, you know he gained an unfair advantage by cheating. It was a lovely dive. It was a very, very bad decision by the referee. But if they are resorting to that, you know, credit to the 19-year-old French yeah. forward. You know, as a striker, he yeah. was thinking the right way. Of course, we don't condone cheating, which is wrong. But at least you know you know somebody is desperate enough for Liverpool to to want to win. Yeah. Um, the yeah. refereeing was poor. I thought the decisions, even uh, Darren Bent's penalty against uh, yep, Spurs, uh, which uh, luckily for Harry's misses he missed. Yeah. Um, Lucky for you as well as, as a Spurs <laughs> it fan. It was. I mean, a one all. I mean, Sunderland were battering us, and if it had been one all, I think Sunderland would have gone on to win it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, um, I don't think uh, Antonio Valencia and uh, John Terry. I don't think that was a penalty in any way. So yes, you get the bad decisions, uh, but uh, yeah, it was a blatant, blatant dive that from Mingo. Uh, yeah, that's what I was going to come into Sheps and to run out the whole segment. You know, um, quickly talking about the perennial issue, which is of course refereeing, right, bro? Um, so you know, last weekend alone, we saw three wrong decisions. You know, in the Ngo penalty, Darren Ben penalty, as well as the United free kick, right? So I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but any team would feel aggrieved by such decisions, right? Oh, yeah, I mean, come I mean, the end of the season, those are big decisions. Yeah, really. I mean, you play your heart yeah. out, and then it could, yeah, it could mean you know, uh, Birmingham City getting relegated. Yeah, uh, you mm -hmm. know, the two points Definitely. that they yeah. dropped, you know, could yeah. could mean a lot to them. Um, well, I mean. All I can say about referees is that you know they are consistently inconsistent. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely put, so chefs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great stuff. But it is time for our third and final break here on the show. But we'll be right back with more chat and banter, and we'll be taking a look at um, the weekend's uh, final round of World Cup qualifying, which is the playoffs. So do stay tuned and keep it locked on to football every day. And you're back with us here on the third and final segment of today's show. Um, there won't be any league games this weekend as it's international week, you know. So let's get into the chat about the World Cup qualifying playoffs. Um, starting with our email of the week, right? Um, this week our top email comes from Ramesh, um, who's a Portugal supporter. Mm -hmm. um, Sheps, he says that while Portugal are favourites on paper, Bosnia won't be an easy nut to crack. I mean, Sheps, you agree with Ramesh, especially now that Ronaldo's going to miss out? It is. I think uh, it's a big psychological blow yeah. uh, to the Portuguese. Uh, they have struggled. Carlos Queiroz, in my opinion, has not really shown enough confidence and intent. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, if you resort to playing Pepe as a central midfielder, you know, you know, you know what you want to do. Right. You know, the intention is not to lose games, but now he's got to try to go out there and beat Bosnia Herzegovina. And without Ronaldo, they will struggle. I mean, it's it, it, it's it's going to work for the Bosnians because you know they're going to be going into the game thinking no Ronaldo, we can win this yeah. game. Uh, and don't forget, they've got Vedat Ibisevic uh, from Hoffenheim in Ger uh, in the yep. Bundesliga. Yeah, yep. um, They've Edin got Edin Zeko, Zeko course, from yeah. Wolfsburg, Misimovic pulling the strings in midfield. I tell you what, Nels, no, I this is one tie that I will not dare to predict the outcome right. and, of. And I mean, the pressure is on Portugal as well, being the you know, with the first leg at home, right? Huge Chef? pressure, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, and uh, I hate saying this, but I hate to think there will be some kind of conspiracy to right. make sure that Ronaldo plays at the World Cup. 
Right, but so over the two legs, chefs, you gotta put your neck on the line. Will it be Portugal Ooh. or Bosnia? Over the two legs. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's really I mean, difficult. Will we see Ronaldo at the World Cup? It's really difficult. Uh, I would love to see him at the World Cup, uh, but um, I'm not sure I want to see Carlos Queiroz at the World Cup. Right. So I haven't answered sure. the question, am right, I? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No worries. Great email, Ramesh. So if you'd like to write to us as well, um, please do so at football at thestar.com.my. Okay, and since we're on internationals, right, um, got to first ask you, Debs, uh, which country do you support? We know you support Man United as a club, yeah. but which country do you support? Of course, I support the Republic of Ireland. What? Because my mother's, a, my mother's wow. Irish. Yeah, and, ah. you know, Malaysia's not in the World Cup, so... I'm going to go with Ireland and they're going to be playing France, right? That's right, yeah. that's right. So yeah. since you support Ireland, which leads us nicely into Ireland versus France. Um, so what do you expect? Do you think Ireland can upset the odds and qualify the I expense of the so. French? I hope so. Well, since um, the new manager Giovanni Trapattoni has taken over, they, the Irish team has developed resilience and they're not, as, not an easy team to beat or play with uh, right. now. So yes, I really do hope Ireland's going to take this one. Wow, it, it will be interesting to see Ireland yeah. qualify ahead of France. Sheps, I mean the current French team, right, is, is by no means on the same level as the team that won and defended of the World Cup in Euro a few years ago, right? I mean, would you say it's down to Raymond Domenech? Uh, it is. I, I thought, you know, he should have gone after Euro 2008. Unfortunately, they've kept him on and he has not rebuilt the team. Only now he is struggling. I mean, you know, without Ribéry, yeah. uh, you know, they seem to lack a, a brains in midfield. Uh, yes, they will depend on uh, Johan Gurkov uh, to possibly pull the strings. Um, up front, they seem to have an abundance of, of talent. I mean, you've got to look at Henri uh, Anelka, and then you've got to look at uh, Karim Benzema, you yeah. know, and, and then they've got uh, uh, um, Giniak as well. Yep. Uh, yep. But they seem to be struggling for the right combination, and I don't want to upset Debbie's mom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hope the Republic make it. <laughs> but if you're going to call it, it's going to be Ireland? I, I would love to see the, uh, the Republic of Ireland there. I, and I'm not saying this because Deb's mom is Irish, <laughs> but because I think the French, you know, they need to realize that you know the Dominic era didn't work for them mm -hmm. but why haven't they made the right decisions I think there's enough good young coaching talent Didier yep. Deschamps yep. comes to mind Laurent Blanc is doing extremely yeah. well with Bordeaux yeah. you know give the yeah. give the younger yeah, coaches definitely. a chance great stuff so Shep sorry very quickly Debs um, the next playoff is Russia against Slovenia so do you think Russia is going to go through? Um, they're, the, they're, the, they're the stronger team and I think with the uh, success of Gushidik who's enjoyed uh, successes playing uh, South Korea and Australia at the World Cup um, yeah it'll be, I, I'm desperate to see him play and see how well he does Right, right, great stuff um, Sheps, the final playoff in Europe sees uh, Greece play Ukraine um, not much to separate the two so um, who do you think going to make it? Not really. I mean, uh, Otto Rehagel is mm -hmm. another coach that, you know, after they won Euro 2004, I thought this is not the brand of football I like to see. I know you're wearing a Greece shirt, but uh, <laughs> I'd rather see Andrei Shevchenko at the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to agree. Um, and very quickly, a quick mention on um, the Asian playoff, uh, which is New Zealand versus Bahrain. Um, where Asia could have a fifth representative at the World Cup. Sheps, your thoughts um, on this one? I mean, uh, you know, I was working on the first leg mm -hmm. and I can tell you that, you know, on, on that 90 minutes of football that was dished out, I wish both teams were not going to the World Cup. Right. Uh, you know, I, of course, being Asian, you know, I will go with Bahrain being the slight favourites. Uh, but uh, again, I mean, the football was so poor that the, this, either one team going to the World Cup, they're going to be whipping boys anyway. Great stuff. Uh, well, to round up today's show, um, this week's fun fact is on um, under fire France coach Raymond Domenech. Guys, get this right. Um, did you know that Domenech is actually a keen amateur dramatist and an astrologer and has actually admitted to distrusting Scorpios such as Robert Pires. <laughs> Sheps, you buy this kind of stuff? No, you cannot be a football coach if you, if you believe or you buy that. Yes, I mean, you can delve, um, you know, dabble in astrology. Uh, which I think you know, m you know, uh, a lot of people do, but you can't, you know, uh, depend on that to pick your football teams. It's all about talent. It's all about desire and hunger. And if there is a Scorpio, you know, who is desperate for success, by all means, have it in your team. Yeah. So that's you'll be hoping that Ireland put out a team full of Scorpios then, right? <laughs> <laughs> Against France this weekend. But guys, lovely stuff as as usual. Um, great having you with us. Hope to see more of you very very soon. But that's all the time we have on today's edition of Football Every Day. So until we see you next week, enjoy your football and it's Charles from us on Football Every Day.